Let's look at the functions of the structures found in prokaryotic cells. Let's start with the cell wall. I've got my cell here, and remember that the cell has two layers. It's got an inside layer called the plasma membrane, and an outer layer here called the cell wall. And the cell wall really has three functions. The first one is protection. The cell wall protects the cell from its external environment. So outside the cell, there are many things that could cause damage to it. And so the cell wall protects it. Another function of the cell wall is to maintain the shape of the cell. Without the cell wall, the cell would have a really irregular shape. So it would probably look like something like this. It wouldn't be able to maintain this nice shape here. And finally, the cell wall prevents the cell from bursting. If our cell does not have the cell wall, like here, as soon as the pressure increased in the cell, the cell would just burst. So this cell would just burst and all the content of the cell would just be expelled and the cell would die. So the cell wall allows pressure to build up uh, inside the cell without the cell bursting. Next, let's look at the plasma membrane. Now, here we've got our cell again. And we've got a cell wall outside, and this time we're looking at the plasma membrane in red inside. Now I've taken a section of this plasma membrane here, so this represents a section here. And really, what the plasma membrane does, it basically controls what comes in and what goes out of the cell. The plasma membrane is semi-permeable, which means that it will only let certain substances in and certain substances out. So once again, it really just controls what comes in and what goes out of the cell. And it does so by either passive transport or active transport. And passive transport does not require energy, whereas active transport does. And so what you really need to remember is that the plasma membrane is semi-permeable, which means that it can control what comes in and what goes out of the cell. The cytoplasm. The cytoplasm contains important structures, including enzymes, ribosomes, and the nucleoid. It really allows these structures to function properly. Enzymes catalyze the chemical reactions of metabolism, ribosomes synthesize proteins, and the nucleoid is the region that contains the naked DNA. So once again, the cytoplasm contains these structures and it really allows them to function properly and allows them to carry out these processes. Pilly, I've got a really nice diagram here for you. Uh, we can see two bacterial cells and here we can see a pilus. Pilus is just the singular for pilly. And what pilly do is that they adhere to other cells, to other bacterial cells, and they pull these cells together. And what happens is once these cells are pulled together, the cells can exchange genetic material, as we can see here. So really their main function is to adhere to other bacterial cells and then bring them into close contact. Then these cells can go through the process of exchanging genetic material. Flagella, um, I've got a nice drawing here again for you. Uh, we can see a flagellum and don't worry too much about this here, um, but it's just so you can see the main structure of the flagellum. Uh, and I've drawn my cell here, and here's the flagellum again. And what flagellum do is that they've got this motor protein, and this motor protein basically spins the flagellum uh, like a propeller. So basically, you would see this movement here. And it's just going to spin, and what this does is then the bacteria moves and it causes locomotion. And so to summarize, flagella are really just uh, to help bacteria move from one place to another. Uh, the flagellum will just spin like a propeller, allowing them to move. Ribosomes, here I've got a drawing. It's a bit complex, uh, but don't worry about it too much. Basically, the green structure here is our ribosome. And what ribosomes do is they synthesize protein. And they do so by translating messenger RNA. So we've got our messenger RNA here. 
and the messenger RNA is being translated through this ribosome in this direction here. And as it's translated, protein is being synthesized. So once again, ribosomes just synthesize protein uh, by translating messenger RNA. And finally, the nucleoid. The nucleoid is just the region in the cell that contains uh, the naked DNA. So you've got our cell here, and here we've got our naked DNA, the region where it's contained as the nucleoid. And so as we said, it contains the naked DNA. And so the DNA contains the genetic material of the cell. And this genetic material is passed on then to daughter cells when the cell divides.